Hello you guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you 10 healthy habits that are easy to implement and are ones that will change your life. I know this because I utilize all of these habits and I am just a happier, healthier, better me because of them. So I'm really excited to share them all with you today and I just wanna say before we get into it, if you're someone that feels like you're starting at ground zero when it comes to living a healthy lifestyle, please do not feel like you need to implement all these things overnight. Like the things about healthy habits is the whole point to create a system that you can be consistent with and it's really hard to be consistent with the really massive lifestyle change so I personally would recommend starting with like three of these healthy habits mastering them adding them into your routine and then slowly building up to all ten I definitely did implement all of these things overnight it was like slow integrations that I built upon to create this lifestyle so without further ado let's get into the video I'm really excited to share it with you guys because I did try out a different creation process I had a different editing style and such I just wanted to play around with my creativity so I hope that the video is a little bit more interesting a little bit more entertaining to watch but you guys are gonna have to let me know what you guys think down below in the comments so let's get into it the first healthy habit that I have is to keep a full water glass or a full water bottle on your bedside table for when you wake up. So I fill up my water bottle the night before and I know this sounds like such a simple habit, but this really has made the biggest impact on my health and just how I feel throughout the day, especially after not drinking any water for eight hours. Rehydrating in the morning is absolutely critical just for aiding in digestion, kickstarting nutrient absorption, flushing out toxins, increasing alertness, and getting a jump start on your water intake for the day. Studies have shown that even mild dehydration can lead to fatigue, decreased cognitive function, and mood swings. So by hydrating immediately upon waking up, you're helping to offset these effects and set yourself up for a more energetic and focused day. But I found I was way less likely to actually promptly hydrate if I had to go downstairs and get a glass of water and all that. So just having my water bottle ready to go on my bedside table for when I first wake up makes me a hundred times more likely to actually get drinking and start hydrating for the day. And I promise dogs, like with with a good chug of water in the morning, you like won't even feel like you need caffeine after that's how much it wakes me up. If this is the first video you're seeing of mine, then now's a good time to fill you in that I am a huge advocate of incorporating mindful practices into your routine for a stronger sense of self, better mindset, a more positive self image, and just more inner peace. So my second healthy habit is to incorporate 10 minutes of any mindful practices in the start of your day. Of course, you could do more or less, but I feel like 10 minutes is a really good standard that is still manageable for a lot of people, but it will still have the power to make a big difference. So so this can look like meditation, breath work, journaling, affirmations, any form of art that you resonate with, a nature rock, anything that allows you just to get present and intimate with yourself to create space for reflection, intentional thoughts, processing, and connecting with self. I am a much, much, much happier, optimistic, hopeful, peaceful, grateful, magnetic, and opportunistic version of myself when I am consistently just connecting with with my soul in this way and I find it directly correlates to just a healthier way of life. So my next tip is a hill I will always die on and is something I pretty much do every day without fail and it is to eat a very intentionally protein centric breakfast. This truly changes the game and it is like pretty much a foolproof way to set you up for success when it comes to the rest of your day. So what I mean by this is to be very mindful and choose a breakfast that is very high in protein. This is amazing for a few different reasons. One, it helps so much with satiety. Like there's a reason why you can really only get down a few eggs as opposed to you could be eating a lot of donuts in the morning because protein is way more satiating than those simple empty carbs. It's also amazing for your hormones it really helps to balance out your blood sugar it also will help to decrease your sugar cravings throughout the day again also because you are much more satiated and also a huge perk is that it really helps to support building lean muscle mass of course and also weight management like I'm telling you you will feel so much more grounded and centered throughout your day if you just start it with an intentional high protein breakfast. This doesn't always have to be eggs and bacon and whatever, it could be some Greek yogurt, maybe it's protein pancakes, but just really aiming to get at least 20 grams, ideally closer to 30 grams of protein every day in your breakfast. And also we're always hearing about how important it is to hit our protein target for the day, so really starting your morning off with hitting a good, getting a good chunk of protein in makes it so much easier to actually hit that target once the end of the day rolls around. You guys, I'm fully like summer mode activated 
shaded right now. I'm fully in my spring and summer mode. It's literally 55 degrees outside, so it's not that warm, but clearly I'm dressing like it's freaking summer. But because I live in Utah, if you don't know, and like I've been dealing with winter since like the end of October, like I just am declaring, especially I think since I'm just so excited for the lifestyle that comes with Bali, like I'm decided that like I'm in summer mode and I'm living for it. And so I had to dress as though I'm living for it, okay? So my next tip is to really prioritize getting your vitamins, your minerals, your greens in. It is so freaking important, especially in the in industry such as like the fitness and health space especially online when i first got into the industry all that was stressed was getting in your macronutrients so like proteins carbs fats that's all that was spoken about and your micronutrients was so overlooked so i can't stress enough how much micronutrients are so important when it comes to energy levels immune support all that sort of stuff i of course am not a doctor so please consult your doctor based on what you yourself are needing but for me my personal go-to's are usually some sense of like beef organs or beef liver i know it sounds weird but there's actually so many nutrients that are in there vitamin d is always a classic go-to so many of us are deficient in vitamin d and vitamin d is a part of so many processes in the body also magnesium same thing and then i always love having a greens powder on hand just because it makes it so freaking convenient to get your vitamins and minerals and greens in but I really have been loving these super greens by live it up firstly because they are made with all organic vegetables which I always can appreciate and I really always try to look out for that when it comes to a green supplement and there's also no artificial colors no artificial flavors there's no stevia there's no sucralose none of that so this is actually flavored I guess if you will, or I should say like the flavor comes from peppermint leaf powder so this does have like a pepperminty mint flavor like fully through and through which I know some people might be like mm, but I honestly really am about it because especially like your greens you know like to have it in the morning and so being able to drink it right after you brush your teeth is really great and you're just really getting exactly what you paid for with this product there's no amount of your money that's going to waste like literally all the ingredients are are your 20 superfoods your probiotics and your digestive enzymes and I just feel like I really always notice better digestion less bloating stronger immunity and just more energy when I'm really consistent on my greens what's also really great about this is it's actually affordable like there's a lot of competing brands that are just freaking pricey okay and sometimes i'm like sis like i i just want to pay that and so this is literally only a dollar 33 per serving which i think is totally valid and honestly really good for the quality that you're getting here and also you guys can use my code lifit 10 to save even more on it so i just want to say thank you to live it up for sponsoring this part of the video and again if you want to try it out yourself you guys can use code lifit 10 i promise this product has my blessing it's really good next is spending more time outside and especially in the freaking sun if you're really wanting to take care of your health physically mentally and soulfully like this is such a big one for you it's honestly unfortunate that our current society has been taught to fear the sun more than actually appreciate it but when you're exposed appropriately it has so many amazing benefits for you firstly when the sunlight hits our skin it triggers the production of vitamin d which is really important for bone health immune function mood regulation and reducing inflammation in the body sunlight exposure also stimulates the production of serotonin we all know and love her that helps to boost mood and feelings of just well-being and it helps to also regulate our circadian rhythm and their therefore our sleep patterns when we are regularly exposing to sunlight. And then furthermore, being outside and just being in the outdoors and in nature has also been consistently linked to reducing stress levels because natural environments have an actual calming effect on the mind, which I think is so cool. So it helps to reduce cortisol levels and promote relaxation while also reducing inflammation in the body. Studies have also shown that being surrounded by greenery and the natural landscapes and all of those kind of abstract lines that are naturally occurring in nature can boost feelings of happiness, satisfaction, and vitality while reducing symptoms of anxiety and depression, which is absolutely incredible and so unreal. I just don't think that being outside will ever not make me feel better. Like the sun on my skin, fresh air, just something about it like immediately makes me feel more grounded, less stressed. Like I can actually breathe physically, but also figuratively. I just feel like it gives me like so much peace and it helps me be more present and it helps me put so much in perspective i just feel like when i'm stressed and i'm anxious about everything that i need to do when i come outside and i'm just like out here it just feels so good and it helps my mindset in so many different ways oh it just feels so lovely is it literally only 55 degrees right now absolutely but listen 
yeah do what you gotta do i'm honestly doing this so that my skin is more prepped for when i go to bali because the sun's gonna be so strong there that i don't get insanely burned and that my skin isn't super sensitive like i feel like this is a good warm-up because right now my skin has not seen the light of day quite literally since september <laughs> which is alarming to think about. Like I'm talking like full body skin exposure. So I'm doing this to prep and I honestly have been getting a few shades darker. So I'm gonna be prepped for Bali and also so I'm not literally glowing on the beach because I would have been so white. Next is to have your workouts written out and in a plan. This is something I really used to do when I first got into weightlift weightlifting because I was just so into it and I was like so excited. I was so obsessed about it. And so like that was like my favorite thing to do of the day was like write out my workout and like figure out what my workout was gonna be. And this honestly is a game changer more so in the sense of freaking efficiency, first of all. Second of all, also just helping to make sure that you're staying on task and progressing in your workout regimen instead of going in there and just kind of free balling it. Recently, I got back into writing my workouts just to help me get excited again and just have more of a structure and it helps me be way more efficient in the gym and way more focused because I'm kind of like it's like you're checking off a to-do list when you're in there and it's been saving me so much time as opposed to just kind of lollygagging being like I don't know which one what exercise I'm going to do next and da, 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 da. and like I'm someone who struggles with indecision and so when I'm in the gym sometimes I'm just like I'm so indecisive of what exercise to do next so it's so convenient to have your workouts actually written out and that leads me to a really exciting announcement I am actually Actually, officially finally launching my own challenge my own lifted challenge is going to be live this Sunday April 21st at 10, 10 a.m. MST I designed this challenge to really help you regain your spark and just your discipline when it comes to your health wellness and routines so we're really starting at the foundational level of healthy habits through a morning routine to help you just overall feel better have a better mindset a better sense of self have more inner peace and be more open in your day today so the morning routine in the challenge challenge consists of six steps that you you are to do every day without fail for the duration of the challenge and then there are also four weeks worth of workouts as well in the challenge it's a four-day split because I wanted this to be very manageable for the average person not someone who's like super in the gym six days a week going hard but also not like beginner beginner no two workouts are the same in this challenge every single workout is completely new and unique in the four-day split is one that I found to be a really perfect balance for me to live just like an overall happy, healthy lifestyle where I'm still making progress in the gym. I'm feeling good about myself, but the gym isn't consuming my whole life. So the four day split is a lower body lift an upper body lift, steady state cardio. And then lastly, my full body circuits for day four. There's a lot of resources as well included in the guide, like an affirmation bank, a goal setting worksheet, a habits tracker, a spot for you to plan out your own personal workout split, depending on what days you want to do, which workouts. So I'm really, really excited about this i just hope this is a really helpful resource for you guys to get excited and motivated with taking care of yourself again so if you're interested it'll be available at my website again this sunday april 21st at 10 a.m mst i always get passionate about this tip whenever i'm advocating for increasing your step count because it was something i was so close-minded about in the past and it was something that completely changed my life it's to the point where i literally <laughs> will guarantee that 100 percent of you guys will feel better once you actually increase your step count for the day so this this can come from actually going on designated walks outside. Maybe it's from parking further away in the parking lot or taking the stairs other than the elevator or even just using a walking pad at home. The point is just to move your body more and adding more activity in your day that's outside of your workout helps to enhance your energy levels, create momentum in your day, improve your mental health, support weight management, aid in digestion, strengthen your bones, and also enhance longevity in your life. Research suggests that regular activity like walking is associated with a longer lifespan, better focus, improved productivity, and so much more. My life really did actually change once I realized that one one hour workout a day does not entirely combat or cancel out the sedentary lifestyle that so many of us in the U.S. are living. I recently just got a walking pad and again, absolutely life-changing like I, I swear my life will never be the same I personally love using it because so much of my job is sitting just doing computer work so now I can actually walk while I work and get like two to three miles in while getting an hour of work in it's like absolutely amazing and life-changing I'm obsessed with it I'll link the one that I have from Amazon down below it has like a desk right with it so it's so convenient to do that computer work but before I had the luxury of a walking pad I would just be more mindful about going for walks 
throughout the day. I still do, especially when it's really nice out. Listen, I'm a sweets gal, all right? I have a big sweet tooth. I'm a very big advocate for balance on all of my social media platforms. I'm all about fueling your body well, physically, for health, for performance, for your goals, but I'm also all about eating to fuel your soul, right? To fuel your inner child. That was like a huge, big lesson in my own fitness journey of something that I really learned to come to peace with and like embrace that I'm someone who has a sweet tooth and like there's nothing wrong with that. But this does bring me to my next habit, which really has helped me have that better balance of eating for my goals, but also for the soul. And that is to save your sweet treats for either later in the day or if you're like me, the evening. I'm someone who loves to end my day with a sweet treat. So I'm someone who just prioritizes saving my sweets for that time of day, as opposed to snacking all throughout the day with sugar or like starting my breakfast with like a really sweet treat. Don't get me wrong, I still do that sometimes of course but for the majority of the time I'm saving my sugary treat for the end of the day this helps me for a few different reasons one I find when I do have sugar really early in the day my cravings are way higher throughout the day I tend to want to continue to gravitate towards sugar once I start eating sugar in the beginning of the day two I find I'm more snacky throughout the day as well Three, I end up having just more energy crashes. And four, it definitely is harder for me to minimize my sugar intake if I'm starting to eat sugar so early throughout the day. It just leaves so much more of a window and room to continue eating sugar, which usually always ultimately leads me to eating more sugar than I would like to for my own personal goals. So keeping your kind of eating window, if you will, of sugar to a limit helps you to stay in a more manageable zone. Again, I'm really not trying to demonize sugar. That's not my point. My point is just to try to give you guys some tools and strategies to help you guys incorporate sugar and your sweet treats and your fun foods into your diet in a balanced way. Which by the way, if you wanna know my current obsession right now, this is my candy cabinet from Easter Candy. These Brookside dark chocolate blueberries, they're never gonna not be good, they're addicting. Now, the first like few years of my fitness journey, all I did was weight training like six days a week. And then when I needed some bouts of cardio, it would be like a hit circuit or doing like a hit style interval training with the stationary bike. That was like all that I did. I had no other training diversity in my split and it led me to feeling just so unathletic i felt so one-dimensional and i honestly felt really foreign in my body to be honest so something that helped me so much just feel a ton better in my fitness journey was incorporating more like mobility based types of movement now, don't get me wrong weight training definitely helps like you're taking your body through ranges of motion, like it's definitely working on your mobility. But I'm speaking here mostly in terms of like Pilates, yoga, doing mobility stretches. That helped me so much just feel way more comfortable and aware in my body. I felt just way more mobile. And I just didn't feel so like stiff and like tight all the time. Like Pilates and yoga helped so much to like elongate the body. And also there's so much connection of your breath to the movement that you're doing and just way more intentionality. And it helps so much with increasing that mind to muscle connection. I'm trying to live a healthy, happy lifestyle for as long as I possibly can. And so training for longevity and in a way that really so supports and takes care of my body over the long haul is really, really important to me. It also literally does not need to be a daunting thing at all. Like I'm not saying like, oh crap, like now this means I need to re-evaluate my whole entire workout split. Like no, I incorporate it really minimally, but it's still very effective. So like I'll only do yoga and or Pilates like once a week, mostly maybe twice a week if it's a good week. And in terms of mobility work, I will literally add in like five minutes before my two leg days a week. And it does so, so, so much. So I don't want you guys to be discouraged or feeling like you need to put all this time in. Like I literally do at home Pilates, like a 30 minute video with move with Nicole on YouTube. And then I'll go to like a yoga class, like I said, once a week. If I didn't do Pilates, sometimes I'll do both, but that's literally it. So before you guys are killed by your curiosity, yes, I'm at a public children's park right now, but I love the park because I love coming to swing. Honestly, one of my biggest forms of free therapy is swinging. Like, don't ask me why, what it is. I think it's because it makes me feel like a kid, but it's also just so relaxing and something about it is just so fun to me. I love it. So for my last tip, I feel like a lot of us think of, when we think of health, so traditionally we're like, okay, how can we move our bodies better? What's the best workouts to be doing? How can we fuel our body best? What should we be eating? But as I've gotten older and deeper in my fitness journey, I've realized something that's so important 
when it does come to the greater picture of health is our actual enjoyment, our happiness, our relationships. Like all of it really does play an absolute major role. And so my final tip for this video is to do things that make you happy, do things that fill up your soul, do things that you enjoy. This could be taking yourself on coffee dates, taking yourself on a little self-love date. Maybe that's playing outside. For me, that is swinging, longboarding, going for walks. Maybe for you, it's doing some sort of art form like Maybe it's making music, maybe it's dancing, literally whatever it is, maybe it's doing crossword puzzles, like whatever makes you happy, fills up your soul and makes you feel like, hey, I'm actually just enjoying being and I'm enjoying my time here on earth, like doing more of those things is really so important when it comes to the greater overall picture of health. The older I get, the more I realize how important it is to stay close to those things and how important it is to stay connected to your inner child and stay close to the things that you used to love as a kid and stay close to the things that make you feel youthful and vibrant and like a kid because those are the things that make life worth living in my opinion. Those are the things that give life so much vibrancy and so much depth and like those things are usually what give people the most fulfillment. You wouldn't really think so because I'm telling you to almost do something completely separate from traditional fitness goals, but almost always taking this time to just enjoy and be and do things that fill up your soul will almost always indirectly help you do better when it comes to adhering to your goals or doing better work and when you're doing these things that make you feel fulfilled, we're just better people when we're happier and we're more fulfilled. We want to treat other people better. We're able to show up more in our relationships and show up better in work. And it just really directly correlates and translates to so many other areas in our life that we don't think it does immediately. And those are all 10 healthy habits that I have to share with you guys in this video. I'm so curious to know what healthy habits you are wanting to work on implementing in your routine and also what healthy habits that you may already do that I mentioned in this video. Let me know down below in the comments because I'm curious. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. It really helps out my channel. And next video I upload, we are going to be in Bali, which is absolutely insane for me to think about that I'm going to be like across the world. So if you want to see more videos from me and come along for the Bali content, then definitely subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm sending you so much love and hopefully I'll see you in my next video. Peace out.